Good example and welcome to Bhutan This Week. I'm Kizam Angmo. Our main stories this week. His Majesty the King graces ceremony to commemorate 400 years of Xiong Zhatang's establishment. Bank of Bhutan launches collateral free loan for skilled day soaps, and over 50 electric cars arrive as part of government's electric vehicle project. On Jabjong Kuche, His Majesty the King, His Majesty the Fatru Gelpo, and His Holiness the Jekhempo grace the ceremony to commemorate 400 years of the Xiong Zhatang at the Bunakazong. Members of the royal family, ministers, and senior government officials were in attendance for the special event. His Majesty the King, His Majesty the Fourth True Gelpo, and His Holiness the Jekhempo offered prayers at the most sacred Machin Hakang of the Punakadzong. Special prayers were recited at the Grand Kinre of the Punakadzong with Kusum Togi Mendel offerings. The first formal monastic community in Bhutan was established by Jabdrung Ngawang Namgyal at the Cherry Monastery in Thimpu, which was completed in 1622. The establishment of the Shundata is of historic significance as it marks the first steps in unifying Bhutan as a nation-state in the 17th century. As part of the celebrations, the Shundata held a tendril ceremony earlier in the day for 118 newly ordained monks and to award certificates to the first four monks who received PhD degrees from the Dorden Tashita University. Kim Zhang Hadden, BBS News. His Majesty the King granted the to the chairpersons of the Zongkak Tsogdu of 20 Zongkaks at the Linkana Palace in Punaka on Wednesday. The chairpersons or Tizen are elected from among the Gups of the Diti, which is the highest decision-making body in the Zongkak. Elaborating on His Majesty's vision for Bhutan and concerns for future, His Majesty said to the Tizens that their every initiative must be guided by how best it would benefit the people and help them prosper. The Anti-Corruption Commission was established to prevent and fight corruption in the country. However, manpower shortage is one of the major challenges the Commission is facing in fulfilling its mandates. The Commission reported an average attrition rate of 9% from 2016 to 2020. This is according to the report reflected in the 2021 assessment of the Anti-Corruption Commission of Bhutan. The report was launched on Wednesday. According to the report, the psychological, emotional and social toll of the work and limited training or career development are some of the reasons for employees leaving the job. From 2016 to 2020, 47 staff left the job. This is attributed to the staff taking leave uh, for extraordinary leave and resigning to pursue long-term studies and some seeking for lateral transfers and some other factors may include the social psychological factors uh, to be able to cater to these issues. So the ACC has a social welfare scheme and also the child care centers for the working parents. And also we have this uh, allowance scheme, so which helps to keep the, uh, keep the staff motivated. The assessment highlights the strength and weakness of the ACC and also provides practical solutions to the challenges. The report recommends delinking the human resource management of the ACC from the RCSC. This, it says, would grant them complete independence over regulating its staff management and appointments. In order to address the high turnaround rate, 
So the ACC has already started uh, legislative amendments to delink its human resource management from the Royal Civil Service Commission. So we are still working on it. As per the report, the ACC continues to perform well, but has performed least in dimensions such as detection, investigation and prosecution. The Commission plans to do extensive studies on vulnerable areas prone to corruption. Currently, there are 133 staff in the office of the Anti-Corruption Commission. Kelsang Choden, BBS News. A couple is under trial at the Thimpu District Court for allegedly trafficking several women to Middle Eastern countries. Dawadema and Karmatale, both from Tonsa, allegedly trafficked 44 women by deceiving them with promises of attractive job opportunities. The District Court conducted the opening statement of the case on Tuesday. According to the Office of the Attorney General, the couple allegedly trafficked the women to Iraq and Oman through their partners in the UAE, India, Iraq and Oman. The OEG found that the women had been trafficked between 2018 and 2019. Dawadema is said to have lied to the victims about the jobs and also not revealed the places of work. While processing passports, she instructed them to tell the authorities that they were either going on vacation to meet relatives for business purposes or for educational purposes. Her partner, Karmatile, is said to have assisted her with transporting and harboring the women. In the workplace, the victims were made to work for long hours without rest and some were even raped. Their passports were seized and salaries were also not paid. When they wanted to return, they were threatened and told to pay as high as 9,000 US dollars to leave. Dawadema also demanded 600,000 yildam from them for their return. Dawa received between 1,100 and 2,200 US dollars per woman as the commission. She also received monthly allowances from her main agent and had made nearly 400,000 yildam as employment fees from the women. According to the OEG, Dawadema was a businesswoman in Thimphu who had borrowed money from several people. After she was unable to pay back the money, she fled to New Delhi, India in 2015. She lived there working at a travel agency. Then in 2017, she reached Dubai as a victim of human trafficking herself. After working there as a housemaid for six months, she decided to work together with the agent. She then influenced three Indian women and sent them to Oman. After returning to New Delhi, she also started working with a partner from Bangladesh. As per the Penal Code of Bhutan, the offence of trafficking a person is a felony of the fourth degree with sentencing of three to five years in prison. The OEG has requested the court to grant the highest prison term so that people do not perform such heinous crimes in the future. The OEG has also asked for the defendants to compensate the women for the money they took from them as fee. Gilladim for BBS News. Employees of all state-owned enterprises will not be getting the Performance-Based Variable Incentive or PBVI this year. According to the Finance Minister, the incentive will be suspended until the government's finances improve. The PBVI was one of the major features of the 2019 hike for SOEs. The 25% corporate allowances for state-owned enterprises were slashed off in accordance with the 2019 pay revision. Instead, the annual PBVI was introduced along with a 20% housing allowance. Whether the SOE is making profit or not, whether the SOE is, uh, is, is uh, taking a social mandate without, uh, any, uh, opportunity to, without any opportunity to generate uh, revenue for self-sustenance, we will be treating at par with each other. There will, no, they, they will not be any uh, differentiated treatment. Since this, is part, this came as a part of uh, an executive order from the government, in the process of uh, rev uh, revising the pay and allowances for the SOE employees, uh, we will not say that we are t uh, doing away, but basically we want to say that currently we are suspending uh, because of the current revenue situation. So as and when the government revenue situation improves, I think uh, things will fall back to its place. 
More than 2,000 Daesoops have been trained and skilled through the Daesung skilling program so far, but many are struggling to put their skills to use due to lack of finances. To help these individuals, the Bank of Bhutan launched the DSP startup loan on Wednesday. Under this new scheme, skilled Daesoops can get loans of up to 5 million yetum from the bank without mortgage or collateral. Access to finance because of collateral requirements is one of the biggest impediments to setting up a business. It is the same for Desups who acquire various skills from the skilling programs and wish to earn a living through it. The DSP startup loan aims to support young budding entrepreneurs pursue business opportunities, address youth unemployment issues and strengthen the economy. It has been approved and classified under the Priority Sector Lending Portfolio. When you refer to the skilling programs that uh, DSP is providing just now, I think there are about uh, 47 plus skilling programs too. Then I think uh, the, from the, the basic thing of haircutting to, to uh, bakery to uh, I think uh, even construction level na, and ICT, give other, uh, we found it uh, quite uh, relevant na, to, to support this program. To get the loan, a Desup needs to complete the skilling program and the DSP financial literacy program. The Desup should also have a clean credit record and a letter of recommendation from the Desung office. During the launch, three Desups trained in ICT skills signed their loan agreements. I'm just taking up a, like kind of a small loan for now to go for the further training and which uh, DSP has provided for me in India. So once I have completed that, I'm trying to set up my like own digital marketing uh, like agency kind of thing with a group of two or three. The skill top the barrier, nam nong top the barrier. The ni rangi ni business start bani idalo. Mangil malamot an deong bala mamra. Jagalu joni la bani bokot chila. The loan ceiling for individuals is 500,000 newtum for partnerships, 1 million newtum per partner and up to a maximum of 5 million newtum for 5 or more partners. Cooperatives involving 15 or more people can also get a maximum of 5 million newtum. The loans will be provided at an interest rate of 8%. Today, over a thousand day soups are undergoing skilling programs in over 45 courses. Thring Dandup, BBS News. Do you always check the expiry date before buying any product? If not, you should start because experts warn that consuming expired products can sometimes cause food poisoning. In the financial year 2020-2021, the Food Regulatory Authority, BAFRA, seized and destroyed more than 300,000 kilograms of food items. The highest number seized was from Dagana. <laughs> It is very important to know about these things. Most people don't look at the expiry date. For me, if I have time, I make sure I look at the expiry dates. But I forget sometimes when I'm out of time. We don't really get time to check the expiry date for everything. When we shop in bulk, we do not know we bought the expired goods until we are home. Some expired goods have insects. That's when we know it has expired. Our children who are educated do understand that they should look at the expiry date. But our parents, they don't have the knowledge about expired goods and all. When I buy rice, milk powder, oil and milk, I do check the expiry dates. Because if we don't, we will get sick. We know milk has expired when we boil it. I am not literate, but I make sure I give it to someone who knows how to read. Every year, Bafra encounters a substantial amount of expired food products and this year is no exception. Recently, people have been complaining about encountering and buying food items which have expired or nearing expiry. The shops and wholesalers in Thimphu said the increase in expired food is a result of the lockdowns. Of the many items, juice and canned foods top the list. In the 2021-2022 financial year, Bafra recorded about 26,000 kilograms of expired food items in the country. 
we tried to talk to some shopkeepers and the wholesalers in Thimpu. They refused to give us an interview on camera. But recently I bought this uh, chocolate bar from one of the shops in Thimpu. And now looking at the packet here, this chocolate bar has expired on the 22nd February this year. But I still found this in a shop. This only proves that if a buyer overlooks the expiry date, some shops will continue to sell the goods. As per the Food Act and the Food Rules and Regulations of Bhutan, Bafra seizes and destroys expired goods. However, if the same food business operators continue to sell expired goods, they are also levied a fine equivalent to the market value of the product. Scientifically, food doesn't go bad in a split second. It's a gradual process. And the expiry date is supposed to fall somewhere along this process. Expiry date or best before date is the assurance that producers give an indication that product will maintain its integrity for that period. After that, the product may deteriorate, which may lead to a loss of its quality and suitability, even causing food poisoning. As for the buyers, if they buy expired goods, Bafra officials say they can ask for replacement from the same shop. And if the shop refuses to exchange, people can file a complaint to the Office of Consumer Protection or Bafra. Something Dolker, BBS News. Decades after identifying about 120 acres of land for the Bajo Town extension in Wandipodrong, the Zonghak administration finally started with infrastructure development. And by the end of July next year, the plot owners can expect to construct buildings in the extended town area. The extended Baju town is being developed between the existing Baju Trom till the area below Baju Laga. The Zongkak administration is currently digging furrows for drain constructions and excavating land for road construction. After that, works to construct footpaths, drainage and sewerage systems and installation of streetlights will begin. Once these basic amenities are in place, some 270 plot owners will be allowed to start construction in the extended town area. Up until now, the plot owners were not allowed to build any structure. Moreover, there are plans to construct an integrated farmer's market, football stadium and other recreational areas such as riverfront and valley of flower within the extended town. The Zongkak administration says if everything goes as planned, the town extension project is expected to complete in the next five year plan. For Jang Adojin Wadifodra, String Dandup, BBS News. Low emission urban transport system project will replace around 300 taxis in the country with electric vehicles by the end of this year. As part of the project, more than 50 electric vehicles were distributed to cab drivers in Thimpu recently. The project is one of the country's largest environmental projects. The project is a global environment facility and UNDP supported project through which Taxi drivers are given a subsidy of over 400,000 newton or 20% of the vehicle cost, whichever is lower. They are also given a 70% loan without any collateral from the Bank of Bhutan. Uh, 
Lendo se je ne vis là. Ma kugi gari te la be beta be be udalu te da nimchi la be midi da yipchi chekachi te da ma kuna luzome se je ne là te da loksugi gari be be wachin te da nimchi nalu te rangi la gade chi be tsutsupchi te rangi da kepsagi tangsu te oni zumbe te te be thoni se je ne là. Ngaragi sa sangi choni ki goka bom chi du no di ngaragi elektrikar le midi migil de di se je ne là. Ngemagi be wachin di ma kulu. Telendra analo te caca Sony ki ma dua tu tujuh ni lah yang magi garin nadi. Tato nabi awak cinti nama yang sama mahu malu lu mango. The project was started about three years ago. It targeted to replace around 300 fossil fuel run taxis with electric vehicles by last year, but the project got delayed due to the pandemic. Tangaci da konga bedigi losum jodela. Inre tangaci ki pamasumba be gudi di sila. Ta gudi bi thamalu tato da da numpu di hebe dalu. So far, 129 electric vehicles have been imported and distributed under the project. The successful completion of this project will determine uh, future support from the government and we are very hopeful that the government will be providing similar support not only to the taxi sector but also to uh, private individuals and civil servants, corporate employees, Sishunibila. The 300 electric vehicles are expected to reduce around 43,000 tons of the country's carbon dioxide emissions within nine years. For Karma Wangdi, Sunam Pem for BBS News. The winner of this year's Miss Bhutan Beauty Pageant will get to compete in the Miss Universe International Competition. According to the organizer, Bhutan was finally accepted by the Miss Universe organization after trying to get approved for over a decade. More than 20 participants are taking part in this year's Miss Bhutan Beauty Pageant. This is the third edition of the beauty pageant, which began in 2008. The second one was held in 2010, and the third one is being held after more than a decade. Unlike in the past, the Miss Bhutan of this year's competition will get to represent the country at the Miss Universe beauty pageant. According to the organizer Kamasring, he has been contacting the Miss Universe organization since the inception of the Miss Bhutan competition. As the organizer of uh, Miss Bhutan pageant, so I had to sit for a couple of uh, interviews, la, qualification interviews, la. and the last being on the 4th of May, very recently. La. I had a little more than one hour uh, you know, interview session with the franchise director and the uh, operation director, and then finally Bhutan got through. He added the support from the Prime Minister and his recommendation letter played a big part in getting the country accepted. Currently, the beauty pageant is scheduled to have its preliminary round after a week in which the top 10 contestants will get selected to go through to the next round. A panel of judges awards points to the participants for various attributes based on which the winner will be chosen. The previous Miss Bhutan Sugidi, they could not go to anywhere, but this time whoever takes the crown will get a chance to go to Miss Universe, which is going to be a plus point law. An overwhelming number of more than 300 people registered for the selection process. The grand finale of the competition is expected to be held on the 22nd of May. Choni Dama for BBS News. In recent times, Bhutanese women have started to break barriers and establish names for them in the most often male-dominated world of work. From assuming leadership roles in the governance to taking up jobs of both white and blue-collar, Bhutanese women have come a long way to set a trend for the younger generations. In Gilifu, a woman has not only become arguably the lone female paint technician at an automobile workshop, but is also touted to be among the finest paint technician the district has known to date. Very attentive to details, this is 32-year-old Susma Puar in our element. As a paint technician at an automobile workshop, the mother of one knows exactly what it takes to specialize in the profession. She has an in-depth knowledge of the characteristics of paints and materials and gives the true color to vehicles as per her clients' demand. Above everything else, she enjoys the work. 
कलर गिरी कर में कौन से सुर टच अप भी नहीं ना तेरे फुल बॉडी ना कौन से सुर कौन से गिरी कर में ना जूं सर हंड्रेड एमएल ले याता जूं सर after graduating high school, she first started to work as a store assistant at an automobile workshop in Thimphu. As years went by, she upgraded her skills and went on to become a paint technician. She moved to Gelipu in 2020 when the pandemic forced all businesses to come to a halt. <laughs> Today, Susma's skill in paint mixing has significantly helped painters in the nearby automobile workshops in Gelipu, who usually depend on such skilled expertise from across the borders until the pandemic. They said she has eased their task of getting a skilled paint technician. Susma earns about 30,000 ngutam in a month. And as the business is now open with complete relaxations of COVID restrictions, Susma hopes to make the most of her skill and earn more income besides being a trendsetter for fellow women in her neighborhood and across the nation. For Bemasamdrup in Gelipu, Kinzang Hadden, BBS News. And this is all we have for you this week. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.